deep moving on onto the show i want you to speak about my home away from home Bergheim. they've just announced or put up the program for april and they've got one date i think specs for may and i am over the moon at this lineup that's happening on the easter weekend so they've got a lineup here for the how do you pronounce it oster club night which i'm assuming means easter club night and on this night on the 16th of april they have in the main room in Bergheim playing as follows Boris, DJ Stingray, Dr. Rubinstein, Fedor, Freddie K, Helena Half, Jazz, LXD, LXOXO, Marcel Dietman, Natty Serres, Norman Nodge, uh, R. Moximore, R. Is it, how you say that? Roxy Moore, Steffi, Volvox. And in Panorama Bar, they have the following Armed, Carl Craig, IF, Jennifer Cardini, Ketikov, Lakuti, Massimino, Pellegrino. Pal Pagliara, OK Williams, Paramida, Peril, Roy Perez, Soundstream, Tama, Somu. And I am absolutely gagging to get over there sharpest and soon. Number one, because if I'm not if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, the opening hours are back to normal. So it should be closing sometime late Monday morning instead of sun Sunday night or what was it before? Or Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, because I remember no before like the, the peak when I went like in 2019 when there's no restrictions, I think it ended on a Monday at like what was it like nine nine a.m. or something on a Monday morning or something I think I remember walking out there really bright and early having to get an Uber back home to my flipping Airbnb madness, so that's one thing that's gonna be great, and then of course because of whatever's going on in the world now at the moment it might not be full of tourists as much which again is weird for me to say being a tourist myself but. The vibe is significantly better when it's not full of randoms, in my opinion. Again, they can't help it because it's a, it's a massive space. They have to let in some allocations of randoms in order to kind of make, make sure they keep the lights on and ensure they have people spending money at the bar and whatnot. But I feel like this might be one of the best times to go, especially before the rush. And as well, it would be a good time to go to also because it won't be as cold as the times I normally go. Because I don't normally go to Berlin when it's like summerish or springtime. I usually always there around January, uh, you know, towards the months of like, you know, August onwards and whatnot. It's never around the times of like February to like July. I'm never in there around those kind of dates. So to go there around that time is going to be a bit of a blessing as well. So that should be great. The only problem thing that's the issue is obviously because it's an Easter weekend. And again, I'm a bit, you know, out of practice with that because i usually always go out of kind of you know peak season the prices on ryanair are mad from what i've seen for the weekend they're leaving on like the friday coming back on a sunday um the prices are like a hundred or something pounds and if you go any other weekend outside of that kind of bank holiday easter weekend they're like 50 to 70 pounds so it's a real big jump and again that's without luggage so when you add luggage onto it in terms of having an overhead luggage or whatnot it's going to jump up to about 120 140 so it's a bit of a mad one um ubers so um airbnbs i've seen not too shabby i usually always go for the standard get my own apartment you know no one's got time to be staying in mad rooms even though the room thing might be a bit of a bit better option but the gap between it i think it's like you know maybe 50 pounds between having an apartment yourself or staying in an apartment with somebody else so i'm not sure whether or not to do with that one the only other option i think as a kind of cheeky one if i want to just go to rave and come back and do nothing else maybe just rave get get some kebabs and whatnot because there's this account i follow actually this guy called foodie i think foodie tam or foodie tm who actually put up a list of the best places to go and get a doona out there in berlin so maybe you might just go to the top two places so it might just be straight to Bergheim, doona come back home wash shower breakfast straight again boom boom, boom and then come back home if that's the case i'm thinking i might end up going back to that hostel that i went to previously which is what I think it was like a Sunflower Hostel or something. It's next door to Bergheim. It's like literally around the corner. It's an absolute shithole though. Don't get me wrong. Um, and, and full of absolute randoms. But it's right next to Bergheim. So if you actually just want to go and have a place to kind of put your shit down, be able to shower, be able to have a coffee or whatnot or whatever. Might have a drink of water, blah -de blah And it's around the corner. Definitely check out that place. I really recommend it. Um, I enjoyed my time there, even though it was full of random. It was a bit of a shithole. I still enjoyed my, my stay there. I wasn't there for that long. I was only there for like a night because the Airbnb, because I didn't book my Airbnb right. I was, end up, I was meant to book, I didn't end up booking a night I was meant to get there. So again, long story, long story. I'll speak about that another time. But we're looking forward to it. The lineup is pretty sick. 
I'm mostly looking forward to seeing Freddie K. I've never actually seen him play in Bergheim before. Obviously, him being a resident there and somebody that people always say ends up playing really um, great sets in Bergheim. That should be pretty decent. Um, Dr. Rubenstein, obviously, on her home turf also. I'd be eager to see that um, because I've heard she goes a bit crazy in that space too the only person that's a bit of a throw off and might kind of make me want to leave the Bergheim room to go to Panorama Bar will be this lady called Natty Sears or Natty Sears how you, how you pronounce her name I've seen her play twice in Bergheim and one time it was terrible and one time it was really good and the issue is I've only noticed this this is the first time in my whole time going there which has been many years where I've noticed somebody playing terribly like a set normally it's like it might not be my taste but it wasn't bad and this was actually bad and I think the issue is when you go to a place like Bergheim because of all the flipping you know uh kerfuffle to go in there in terms of you know you don't talk in the queue you're mainly sober you cover your phone you're worried about going if you're going to get let in or not there's a lot of stress when you get in there so I think when you do get in there, you're just kind of surrendering yourself to a night and you don't really care who's playing. You're just going to dance and have a good time for the most part. But I noticed for the first time ever, I was knocked out of my trance. Like for, usually when I go in, I don't even check my phone. I'm just literally dancing my face off, going in the toilets to take a shit, dancing my face off, doing the same things, right? But it's the first time ever being there that I noticed somebody was playing terribly. It kind of took me out of the zone. And it kind of made me realize my surroundings. And I had to kind of go back to the Panama bar. If I'm not mistaken, the same night I went to that, out, that she was playing, I think someone like a sound stream or something was playing there too. And I had to go up to Panama bar and then I got, you know, I kind of got back into the zone. And I was like, cool, thank God. And I was able to kind of reconvene and kind of go back again. So I don't know, maybe it's not her fault. Maybe it was like a one-off night again, because I've seen her playing. She was really good. And I've seen her play. She was really terrible. So maybe it's because she's like a newer resident. I'm not really too sure if that's the case, but that's the only thing that's a bit of a concern in that regard. But it's also great. Because someone like myself being a DJ, that the fact that they do stock the lineups with so many residents. They don't always try and go for external people all the time. They do stock it for residents. The other person I'm curious to see play um, live, who I haven't seen playing donkey years, is Carl Craig. Last time I saw him play was maybe in the warehouse rave somewhere in like Shoreditch or something. I don't know, it might have been a place called like the Peanut Factory or something. You know those places? There was like an old venues back in the day that used to throw loads of dance music events and minimal events back in the day. That might have been a time I saw him play. And again, that might have been back when he used to play minimal. I'm not even sure if he even plays that anymore. So I'll be eager to see what he's going to be like live. Uh, Jennifer Cardini, again, I'm not a fan of the kind of Gerd Jansen cosplay stuff that she does. If you notice her play, she even kind of skanks like him behind the decks, plays similar tracks. They kind of DJ in the same way. Clearly, she's kind of inspired by him. I get it whatever but it's a bit of a mind fuck but again she's a decent dj nonetheless but is it somebody that i would run to to go see in panama bar probably not but still i'm not i'm not mad at it lakuti i'm always a big fan of playing there roy perez you know i'm a big fan boy of his i always think he's an absolutely superb dj um soundstream again another person who i'm a big fan of her again saw at panama bar and i unfortunately unfortunately missed seeing him at the venue that i wanted to see him play was was palomas when I went to Berlin in February -ish time, um, I was able to go to Palomas to go to see the, um, for the powerhouse night that they do there with a guy that, I think the guy that puts it on his name is like Finn Johansson or something like that, right? And he's got a really popular blog too that I used to check back in the day. And he puts on this night, it's usually him and a guy called DJ Pete, who's absolutely brilliant. And they play usually back to back or maybe an hour each, banging sets, right? Kind of Itello disco, um sort of kind of e what do you call it ebm sort of vibes it's kind of really in that sort of zone and i really recommend palomas anyway if you want to go to berlin but you don't want to be you know subjected to techno music and you want somewhere a bit fun a bit like laid back maybe more housey disco vibes definitely check out paloma bar it's in cop bus tour like the mainish kind of area where everyone kind of goes and hangs out like around the corner from the burgermeister so you know you can't not find it really great venue and um yeah i went to go to to, to that night powerhouse to go see dj pete and obviously that finn johansson dude and i want to went to see soundstream play because i want to see soundstream play and obviously big venues like panorama but i want to see him play like an intimate venue because Paloma bar is like tiny it might it's like i think it's like i think they got two floors or three maybe three floors um and i would imagine the capacity to, of the entire building all the floors put together it might be 300 it might be 500 it's very very small so i went to see abdija like that playing that small venue would have been sick the same way how when i saw richie horton play at fold right it was like fantastic to see such a person that's so used to playing big stages you know big rooms playing such an intimate space like madness but as i was getting there like as i was coming 
bloody coming up the stairs, um, flipping soundstream past me. I was like, damn it. Do you know what I mean? So that's the only sort of cut, what you call it, cunting thing about it when I went to Berghain. Sorry, I went to Berlin in February. But again, you know, maybe get an opportunity to see him again in April. So hopefully this is something I can go to. If not, unfortunately, I'm thinking because of all the stuff I have going on during the summer, I might have to kind of hold off and only go in August or something or maybe you know, September, which is again, going into the months I'd normally go. Um, I'd like to go this time around. Let's see if I can squeeze it in. I might just do a quick one because I've never done that thing. I, mean, I know some people do that thing where they just leave. They go and rave and they come back. They don't even go, they even book in the accommodation, which is mad, but that might be an option too if I want to do it and I want to actually go and rave and see these people play. Just, you know, go with what I want to go with. Take a backpack there with some toiletries. And if I want to have a quick little toilet, armpit, wash bath, I can do that in a club or something. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. It's a bit, it's a bit grimy, but there are options if you want to do that sort of thing. So yeah, Big Up Berghain, April calendar and program is out. So if you care about that stuff, definitely check it out if 